Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So today we're going to be doing something slightly different, a type of video I've never made before. So typically I'm live streaming on Twitch as many of you here know and sometimes it's difficult to edit that footage and convert it to uh, an edited summary YouTube video. But I got, that, I got this idea to do a little voiceover video. So this one I'm going to try it on is a little wildlife hike I did on stream on March 25th, 2021. And it was a, a really, really great hike. And I want to just you know, try this little video idea and share it with you. So let me know if you like this uh, idea. I plan to also do it with some of the workshop streams I've done lately and things like that to try to give little quick summaries of things we've done on stream. Uh, so yeah, let, let me know if you want me to make more things like this with some of my edited footage. But back to this hike here, we've been here previously on stream and we saw nesting eagles. So the purpose of me coming out here today was to check on them and check on their nests. So usually if eagles are nesting, you could find you know hatchlings eventually, but I haven't been here in like two months to check on them. So I really wanted to come by, check it out and see if anything has changed. And you know, we could see a whole bunch of other things going on in our hike. And right off the bat, we saw something to start with. And you know, this is part of live streaming birding is trying to identify and I spotted this little bird hopping around in some trees and some limbs, and it was very difficult to get a good view. And we couldn't identify it on stream. It wasn't until after stream and me putting this footage together where I could take it frame by frame and try to make it out. So here's the best shot, and I'm curious what you think what might this bird be. My best guess would be a Cape May warbler from these frames. You can see this, the darker black lines separated by yellow on the head. Uh, in another frame, I can also spot the dark pointy beak. So it could easily be something else. I was arguing between American goldfinch, but the fact that it has an entire yellow um, rump and you know, lightly colored head, and then that little dark line with the yellow above it, and also black on top, tells me it could be a Cape May warbler, which they are pretty common in this region, just haven't spotted one on stream before. So that was the first thing we saw. Again, and this is the nice thing about doing these live is that we're identifying them live, and we don't always know. We, we're not always right. And that's one nice thing about doing these voiceovers now is that we can try to identify them later, and it's not me fumbling around like in a live stream, waiting for chat to help me. But if you do like that identification stuff, be sure to check out the live streams. They're a lot of fun if you're not familiar with Twitch. And then continuing on, next up is you know, a common one for the area, beautiful sound bird. They are a little territorial, but right here we found this northern mockingbird uh, perched on a wire, just singing away for a bit. He's very common, see him all the time, but I wanted to include, include it in the video. But now, next one up is a pretty rare one. So this little sanctuary here exists. It's called the Malabar Scrub Sanctuary. Scrub Sanctuary, so the Florida scrub is, you know, type of various foliage, plants, but also there's a very important bird that usually uses this as their main habitat, the Florida scrub jay. And early on in our hike here, I got to see a breeding pair. Only a few couple breeding pairs exist now and they are endemic to this region of Florida. So this is central Florida, a little bit on the east coast, on the space coast here. And it's always a treat when we get to come across these during hikes. And because they are a threatened species, not everyone gets to see them. I know everyone, jays are pretty common around the world, but the Florida scrub jay is common to hear. Um, and they're also, you know, they're at risk because they need a lot of handlers and help for the breeding season, meaning other scrub jays helping them, and they are overly friendly towards humans, and some humans have fed them, making them more friendly to humans, which isn't a great thing. So please don't feed them if you are ever out looking for the Florida scrub jay, but it is, they are my favorite bird, and I always love when I come out to the sanctuary and I get to see them. Alrighty, and now for the eagle check. So the eagles, you got to be a pretty decent uh, distance away. As you know, I have the Nikon P1000, which has a 3000 millimeter lens or like 125 times zoom. 
And so it was a decent zoom distance, so quality wasn't great, but we were able to spot you know, the eagle perched on the nest. And lo and behold, we spotted an eaglet peeking its head up. Um, then we think there were more than one eaglet, and we think there are two eaglets. We happen, they might have names somewhere by the Florida Audubon Society, but we named them Rosalind and Franklin during this stream. Not their official names, just my stream names. Uh, now, it was pretty large if you see it when it peeks its head up there. And so they're a bit older, probably guessing born back in January if we had to, you know, have an idea for it, but don't know for sure. I did contact the Audubon Society to see if they have any more information. And we did, I did go back at a later date. So this was March 25th. So this was a while ago. I did go back at a later date to check on them again. And we did see the two eaglets again, but that could come back up in a later video if you do like these voiceover things. So those are the eaglets, pretty, pretty exciting. Now, moving on from the eaglet excitement, let's continue our little walk here. And we don't only look at birds on our hikes. So here we came across what we at first thought was a Florida garter snake. Then after closer examination, we realized it was a legless lizard or specifically the Eastern glass lizard. Now, how do we figure this out? If you look at you know the still frame here, you know, it looks very snake-like, but right back a little bit, there's an external ear opening, and you wouldn't find that. There's also like a little shine to it that you don't see on snakes, and then there's also a lateral skin fold on the underbelly, and all that, you know, isn't really super snake-like, and it took a little bit after spot spotting this for, you know, the chat to identify it and realize it wasn't a garter snake, but it was an eastern glass lizard. So a legless lizard is actually a lizard, so it's super cool. And now we know this when we spot it again, it'll make life a lot easier. Now back to the birds. So man, this was this was a good time out there in the scrub. So next we came across a pair of sandhill cranes. And Florida's sandhill crane the breeding season is comes a little bit earlier than other people are used to. And we actually found this sandhill crane and their babies. Yes, two little sandhill cranes. They look like two little chickens. And I later learned that the babies are called colts, which, you know, a horse, which is interesting. They look more like chickens to me. But I thought that was a little fun fact to include. And then we were able to get some great shots of the parents teaching, you know, the colts how to forage for food. And just really cute uh, to watch them. Oh, what's it doing? It's trying, it's learning. It's trying to learn. It's trying to be like mom or dad over here. How do you do it? How do you do it? You just poke your beak down in. Look, learn. There you go. Watch and learn this is how you do it. You just jam your, your beak down there and filter out and grab any little thing you can find. <laughs> but this was a busy little area next to this little lake it's pretty low water we haven't had a lot of rain lately super dry out there but found some other things in the area uh so there were some also some model ducks looking for dinner and also an immature little blue heron off in the distance was waiting for food as well so some model ducks and a little blue heron always exciting when you get near the water and we are a little spoiled whenever we go and do the wetland streams, which is, you know, content after content after content. Out here at the Scrub Sanctuary, we end up doing a four and a half mile hike to find what we found today. Um, but so moving on with our walk and trying to get back to the car before sunset, because I didn't realize it was four and a half miles, uh, we have a little grand finale. And you might not think this is a grand finale, but this is me. And I'm kind of a bit more new at birding, bird watching, nature photography, and all this kind of stuff. But we came across a downy woodpecker. And I was really excited about this because this is the first downy woodpecker I've ever seen on stream. And I think it's the first one I've ever seen. So, you know, you always got to be excited about your firsts. And this is, was the little downy woodpecker that we got to spot right at the end. <laughs> but yeah, that was great. And that was all for this hike. I mean, you don't always you know, spot a ton of things, but we saw a great variety today. And the eaglets and the scrub jay, just those alone are a little gift. And we got to learn about the uh, eastern glass lizard and so forth. But I had a ton of fun 
and it was a great seeing all these and all the other things. And if you think these sort of voiceover summary videos are a nice way to bring this all together and quickly summarize these nature streams, I'll love to do them in the future. It, it lets me also look into things a little bit more. Like I looked into the glass lizard, found that uh, external ear opening and how that could be a big uh, distinguishable difference between it and a snake. Snakes don't have that opening. And I was able to learn that little tidbit by putting this together later. And we're in here, we're in this to learn together. That's the purpose of my channel. And so I like doing things like this. And it makes it makes the experience, the viewer experience super enjoyable. And it makes it more like community-like, like we're learning together. But that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this. And I will see you next time where I'll be hopefully putting together some woodshop videos. I did some things in the shop on stream, and I hope to do some of these videos like that as well. All right, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.